Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and I'm back here with a laptop that was conspicuously missing last year from Gigabyte, right, the Aero line, which took a hiatus from their lineup and is now back here in 2025. And I gotta tell you, it's a great creator slash gaming laptop for those that don't wanna break the bank. We're talking about a starting price of $1,500, Prices configured here today, $1,650. Now, you may be saying, well, that's not so cheap, but wait a minute. It has an RTX 5070 in it, and it also has the AMD Ryzen AI7 350, which of course is cracking point. So it's a nice combination between CPU and GPU. It's got a beautiful IPS display. It's not OLED, so you don't have any screen burning. You don't have any worries of PWM. It's a matte finish, although I do have a studio lights here. It is less glare and reflection than you'd get on another laptop. And it also has 165 hertz refresh rate. This is a beautiful display, good color accuracy, good coverage of the color gamut. It gets bright. It's great for content creation. And because it has that CPU GPU combination, it's looking really good. Now it's got a nice two-tone finish here. It also comes in a, a space gray this is i think the space silver or something like that whatever they're calling it i'll let you know but uh, a really nice all-around design here i think this is a nice 16 inch laptop especially if you want to do creative work especially if you want to do some gaming this can fit the bill hey everybody it's andrew and this is the gigabyte aero x16 brand new for 2025 coming up All right, let's start off with the build and design. This is a metal finish on the lid here. And yes, you can open it with one finger for those wondering. It does have an IR camera. We'll take a look at the camera 1080p in a little bit. Uh, the back here is plastic, although before you jump to any conclusions, no, it does not feel cheap at all. In fact, it feels very high end, has almost like a rubberized grip to it. It's actually a really nice finish to it. Uh, and there's very little give or flex in the chassis. The build quality here is really, really good. And as you can see here, this is the bottom of the unit. Uh, this is actually removable, this plate, and there's plenty of upgradability as far as storage and RAM on this. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Nice, refreshing look at that. But I would say overall, the build is very good. It's a thin and light for a 16 inch. Actually, you can see it here. Uh, not bad at all. We'll take a look at the weight right now. Okay, so with just the unit alone, we're looking at 1.967 kilograms, and that is four pounds, 5.4 ounces. Not too bad for a 16 inch laptop. Actually, that's pretty light compared to some of the others in the category. And let's take a look at the power charger, the 150 watt power supply, along with the the power cord, you're looking at five pounds, 5.4 ounces, which comes out to kilograms, 2.422 kilograms for a total travel weight. Not too bad for a 16 inch gaming slash content creation laptop. All right, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is your power port in, that's a DC in, and then of course you get your gigabit LAN port, you get an HDMI 2.1, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, supports five gigabits per second, and you get a USB Type C 4.0 port, supporting 40 gigabits per second, display port 1.4, and power delivery 3.0. Now on the right side, you get a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, a USB 2.0 type A port, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A port that supports five gigabits per second. Notably missing, there's no SD or micro SD card reader, which I would have loved to have had on, especially on a creator laptop slash gaming laptop, but you don't get that here. But I would say overall, a pretty good port selection here. All right, let's talk about user upgradability, and the news is good here, folks. Two SOTOM slots, that's right, you heard that correct, a rarity nowadays in 2025, especially on a creator slash gaming laptop, certainly welcome here. You can go up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5, 5600 mega transfers per second. Love having the ability to swap out the RAM. That is something of a rarity, like I said. When it comes to storage, good news there. Two M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 SSD slots, and my one terabyte in 
in my review unit, got some really good reads and writes, certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. We got gigabit LAN here, so that is certainly welcome here when it comes to the connections here. And you also get Wi-Fi 16, a Bluetooth combo card. It's Bluetooth 5.2. Not the latest and greatest here. I would have liked to have seen Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, but that's not what you get here. But the good news is it is slotted in, not soldered in. So if you need to change it out down the road, you have that option. And speaking of the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, both working flawlessly. I've had no issue with either one. All right, let's talk about the display, and it's a good one here. It's a 16-inch, 2.5K display, 2560 by 1600 IPS display with 165 hertz refresh rate. So one of the benefits of this IPS display is you don't have to deal with things like a screen burn-in or PWM or screen flickering, things that you would have to worry about on an OLED display, which might have some better coverage of the color gamut, will be more color accurate, but uh, this really is a solid display. It's got good brightness here. Here, coming in at 424 nits. It has good black levels, good white points, and has a great, great contrast ratio as well. So overall, that has been very good. Now, with the 165 hertz refresh rate, you get that very smooth, very fluid experience. And the fact that it is a matte display means you don't have to deal with any glare or reflection or minimal at best. And that has been great as well. Now, unlike an OLED display, you don't have HDR here. You don't have certain things that you get on an OLED or a mini LED. That being said, it's great for watching movies, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube. That has been very good. And again, I can't stress this enough. Not having a glossy display to me is a big win, not only for productivity, but for gaming as well. So this is the camera on the Gigabyte Aero X16 here for 2025, bringing back the Aero line, which is really appreciated here because I really like the last iteration. They skipped last year. Now we have it this year, which is good to see. Now, this is a 1080p IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. What do you think about the video quality and what do you think about the audio quality? Let me know. Now, of course, this being a uh, AI PC because it does have uh, AI uh, in this. It's got an NPU. You got the auto framing, eye contact, background blur, background effects here. That's a standard blur, portrait blur. Pretty decent, actually. Uh, pleasantly surprised here. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments section below. All right, let's talk keyboard here. And actually, it's a pretty good one here. So the Aero 16 does not have a numpad, despite being a 16-inch laptop. I know some people want a numpad, some people don't. I think it's 50-50, so it's a split down the middle. So let me know if you want it. Let me know in the comment section if you don't want it. Either way, this is what you get here. Uh, it's a pretty comfortable keyboard and it has 1.7 millimeters of key travel. So that has been pretty good. Good tactility, overall good feedback. There is a one-zone RGB backlight with three intensity levels and that worked out very well. So fully customizable, of course, in the settings. And you get a precision touchpad that I thought was very good for scrolling, doing all the gestures. It's a mechanical touchpad. It's not a haptic touchpad, but of course, at this price point, I'm not really expecting that. And I thought the performance of the touchpad worked out really well. All right, let's check out performance here. And this is running the AMD Ryzen AI 7 350, also known as Kraken Point. It has eight cores, 16 threads, supports multi-threading, has a base clock speed of two gigahertz and can boost up to five gigahertz in total. So a very capable chipset, especially if you're doing your everyday tasks like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all worked very well. As you can see, the single core, multi-core score of Geekbench 6, of course, it is a synthetic benchmark and the good results here on the Cinebench 20. 24 when we compare it to others in the category, especially because this comes in at a less price than the others. Now, it does have the requisite number of tops to be considered an AI PC. And as you can see from the Geekbench AI results here, very capable when it comes to doing some AI work. Of course, these are early days with these benchmarks, so just keep that in mind. And of course, it has a discrete GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 with 85 watts of total TGP here. And as you can see, you can do 4K video editing in things like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Now, speaking of DaVinci Resolve, I ran the Puget Bench DaVinci Resolve benchmark, holding its own here with this CPU-GPU combination. So for things like creative work in things like 
Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, this is certainly capable. Now, I ran the 3D Mark suite of tests here, Time Spy, Firestrike, Wildlife Extreme, and Steel Nomad. And as you can see, it's very capable when it comes to the graphics here. So definitely good for things like creative work and things like gaming. Now, speaking of gaming here, you can play some of your favorite titles here. Of course, you'll have to play with some of the settings. And it does support the DLSS because, of course, this is a 50 series. And you can get some enhanced frame rates if the title supports it. But overall, pretty decent numbers here, especially for the price point. So uh, all in all, I would say this is a very good CPU GPU combination when it comes to gaming. Now, the GMate software that they give you with this, of course, is made in-house at Gigabyte, and it's pretty good, actually. So you get all your statistics here, the CPU performance, the GPU, the RAM. You got the different modes. So you got the balance mode, the game mode, the creator mode, power saving mode, and the online meeting mod. And, of course, or I guess they meant mode there. Uh, I just there's not enough room there. <laughs> I want to say mod. But those are the different modes there. And you could actually see it when we go to the system settings here. Uh, the different things you can do here as far as utilities, hardware connection, customizing it, and then the scenario profile settings here. I have it on the game mode, but of course you could do creator mode, power saving online meeting, balance mode, as I mentioned. So a lot of, a lot of control there. Again, all these different things at your fingertips. I think they did a pretty good job here in terms of this GMate software. And great news, when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will throttle under heavy load, it got a passing score of 97.7%, meaning it detected virtually no throttling under load. That's the kind of result we want to see from a laptop of this ilk. Now, when it comes to the surface temperatures, the underside never got overly hot. Even when I pushed this under heavy load, heavy gaming, it remained relatively cool throughout. I think the fans did a really good job there. The venting, of course, certainly helps there. And then when it comes to the top of the keyboard, over there you see there's a couple of hot spots there 43 degrees celsius or so not really that bad and when you place your fingers where you're typing never getting overly hot so i think overall they did a pretty decent job here when it comes to the surface temperatures now the power supply the 150 watt power supply never got overly hot either it did warm up a little bit even under load but of course remain okay in terms of the coolness there now as far as fan noise is concerned as you can see it can peak as high as 53 decibels under maximum load but in the other modes it remained relatively quiet so i think they did a good job keeping it at bay and of course the gmate software allows you to control the different performance modes and that will play a will certainly play a big effect on whether or not you hear the fan noise all right, let's talk battery life here. And this sports a 76.1 watt hour battery. Not the biggest out there in a 16 inch creator slash gaming laptop, but it definitely did pretty good here. So the eight hours and 35 minutes on the PC Mark 10 modern office test, a mixed use test, uh, really did okay here. And it did seven hours and 46 minutes on the video playback under maximum mode, just under two hours. So I think overall, you're looking at a pretty decent result here. And when it comes to fast charging, it does support it with that inclusion. Included 150 watt power adapter charges via that barrel pin connection. Overall, battery life is pretty decent here, and it does have that fast charging that I do really like. Now, when it comes to the audio, there are two stereo speakers, two two-watt speakers to be exact, and they're actually pretty good in terms of voice reproduction, and the overall sound is pretty good, although I'd like to get it a little bit louder, but it does have some decent bass, and overall mids are pretty decent. Again, good, but not great here, but you be the judge. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give it a listen. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to boot into this uh, drive right here. This is Ubuntu Linux on this partition here. So I'm gonna say yes to the USB drive, of course. Uh, try or install, let me click that. But I may have to go into the safe mode because this didn't work the first time. 
So we'll see if this will do it the second time. If not, uh, we'll have to see a workaround. Sometimes it doesn't play well with AMD processors, it seems. So I'm not sure if the drivers are all there, but let's uh, let's experiment and we'll see. We'll be right back. So far, it seems it gets to that splash screen and then it goes off here and now it's a blank screen. I don't know if it's gonna recover there. So maybe it's a graphics thing. The 5070 might be uh, causing this. I may have to go into the graphics safe mode. Let me try that. I'll be right back. Let's go to the safe graphics. Let's try that because I couldn't get it to work without doing that. So this may be the issue. I had another issue on another AMD crack and point laptop. It didn't also boot there. So uh, this may be an issue regarding AMD processors and Linux. Again, drivers may be at play here. We'll see, but let's see if this will work. All right, so it can't get past this point. I just see this little X cursor here. Oh, wait a minute. That's an encouraging sound here. So I heard the boot up chime and that really is interesting. I think it's a graphics issue here uh, with the drivers. I, I don't see anything on the screen here. I heard the boot up Ubuntu boot up chime. So again, so I think this is a little bit of an issue here. I think there's a potential for uh, Linux to work on this. It's just have to play with some of the drivers and some of the settings, but uh, so far I couldn't get it to run off this USB drive. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to review this is because it has a very competitive price starting at $14.99. You can go over to Best Buy and that gets you that 16 inch 2.5K display, the same Kraken point processor, a terabyte of storage, 32 gigabytes of RAM, but with the RTX 5060, remember we have the 5070, but that starts at $1,500. And the unit that we have here also at Best Buy for $150 more gets you the RTX 5070 coming in at $1,650. And when you look at some of the others in the category, especially the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16 comes in a lot more expensive than this one. And I think you're getting a lot of bang for the buck, especially if you want a no nonsense creative slash gaming laptop. This certainly fits the bill. Okay, let's bring it all home. And what do I think about the Gigabyte Aero X16 laptop here for 2025? A great creator slash gaming laptop that won't break the bank. I'm glad to see the Aero line back after taking a hiatus last year. So good to see that. Solid build, very comfortable keyboard, good system performance, good gaming performance. The muck switch is welcome here. Matte 165 hertz IPS display. No worries of PWM. That's a real big plus. Expandable RAM up to 64 gigabytes. Two M.2 SSD slots up to four terabytes. That is great. Won't break the bank coming in at a starting price of $1,500 and as configured $1,650. The negatives here, the fans can get loud during gaming, but that's pretty much par for the course. No Wi-Fi 7. And the 5070 is not that much better than the 4070 when it comes to the overall numbers. So it's marginally better at that. So just keep that in mind. But overall, I think they did a great job here bringing back the Aero X16, especially if you're looking for a creator laptop that can also game here. This certainly fits the bill and won't break the bank. Great job there by Gigabyte, and I look forward to more iterations of this in the future. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing, and if you're a casual viewer of my content, why not hit that subscribe button? It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps support the channel. We're making our big push to 250,000 subscribers, and by the time you're seeing this, we've already passed, yep, you guessed it, 240,000. We're closing in on the goal. We may have to move that goal post maybe to 300,000. We'll see, because we're growing at a rapid rate, and I wanna thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. Now, if you're gonna buy something like the Gigabyte Aero, why not check out the links in the description below? Yes, they are affiliate links, and no, not a huge commission, a small commission that helps go to support the channel, helps keep the lights on in this studio. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.